Oh, let's get on with it. Hi, my name's Johnny and... Today, we are taking a look at the SF base from Red Sub. Now I put up a post on my Instagram page blocking out the logo and trying to get you guys to guess what headstock this was. Only one person got it right and that's because it's a bit of a weird one this. So as far as I'm aware Red Sub are Gear for Music's own brand. A bit like Toman has Harley Benton, their in-house brand. Red Sub is kind of Gear for Music's answer to that. But are they as good? We will see. So this is my first experience with Red Sub. I've been eyeing them up for ages though because they've got some really cool looking models. I'll leave a link in the description to go and check out all of the Red Sub bases because you'll be blown away by some of the uh, Colosseum models that they've got there. The fan fretted kind of Dingwall style bases for like 350 pounds with these insane burl finishes. Go and check out Bully the Kids video on one though because looks pretty good. So this is obviously Red Sub's take on the Fender Jaguar base. The offset body and the PJ configuration. Now I know I've put this Fender strap on here um, just because it matches with the uh, Sunburst finish a little bit. Blasphemy, I know. If you look at the body here, oh, it's kind of, it is a Jaguar, but there's something about it that's a little bit, a little bit different. I think it's a little bit skewed, so like this, this part of the body is a bit longer than you'd normally get on a Jaguar, um, but it's pretty close. So starting up at the headstock, on the back it says here that this bass was made in Vietnam. I've never played a Vietnamese bass before, normally Indonesia or China, yeah. Interesting to see what the build quality is like from a factory out there. I will say, I just, I don't like this headstock. I don't think it matches the more vintage styling of the body. I don't dislike the design, I just don't think it matches that well with the overall aesthetic of the bass. And the same thing for the tuners. I I really like clo classic clover, you know, Fender style tuners. So these smaller peg ones don't really do it for me. Now this bass costs 150 pounds new. So I'm expecting the machine heads to not be great. But I've been pleasantly surprised before. And in this case, they are not great. <laughs> it feels like when you're tightening the tuning, they're, they're getting really, really tight and it's, it's really tight. Um, but then when you go to loosen it, it like really loosens. And so I find that if your note is sharp and you're trying to tune down, it's actually really difficult because you've got to make tiny adjustments. It's really tight getting it back up, but really easy uh, to undo. So that doesn't scream quality to me. They hold their tuning relatively well. So what is quite cool about this headstock is it does angle that way a little bit and does have a little bit of a of a heel here um, so, so it's nice and comfy. Um, and that's quite typical of like your Jacksons and Ibanez basses that tend to do that to improve with your like string tension. Now despite there being no kind of string tree or anything up here, there's surprisingly little fret buzz. Also got the truss rod underneath this little cover here, which is a nice touch for a 150 pound base. They didn't need to put that on, they could have just left it bare, so that's pretty cool. We've got this plastic nut here, which is cut really well. The strings fit really well in it, and that's probably helping to reduce that fret buzz. It's a little bit sharp, but it's not too bad. The frets moving on up, they are poking out, you can feel it, but they are smooth on the ends. I didn't have any discomfort when moving up the fretboard. I wouldn't complain about this fret job. I think it's fine. You might have seen my unboxing earlier in the week. My instant reaction was that this is one of the best finish necks on a cheap bass I've ever played. And, and I stand behind that statement. This neck feels fantastic. It feels so smooth. It feels so much better than your Squire Classic Vibes that have got this 
gloss lacquer on the back, which I always end up just sanding off and just so it's a bit like unfinished or a smoother. This is so smooth, but it's not got that cheap unfinished feel that you would expect. I would describe it as more like a D-shape neck profile, similar to like an Ibanez Talman or something like that. Initially, I thought it was quite a big neck, but um, but I think it's really comfy. Um, it's definitely more in your P-based territory. On the Fender Jaguar that I owned, that was much more like a jazz-based neck with a really modern C. So this is a bit further away from that. I'd say it's more in P-based territory but it's still really comfy. Now, the fretboard, I was super interested to know what this was because it's kind of got that dark look which you'd associate with like ebony. It is a maple laminate fretboard. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of the fretboard, a little bit like it can get dry quickly. And yeah, I think that kind of shows the cheapness there in that fretboard. I can't quite pinpoint what it is about the fretboard. Um, that I like or dislike. So we'll just move on. Around where the screws are, it's a little bit unfinished. Um, and certainly when you start looking closer at the pit guard, this one was a bit rushed. And I've got these marks around the edge where it's not cut that smoothly. I didn't notice this until I started looking deeper. But yeah, that is something to bear in mind that there are imperfections in the build quality. Vintage style bridge, which is fine. We've got three knobs. That is volume, volume, and tone. The input does come loose quite easily. And I get a bit scared when pulling out the jack sometimes because you can see it kind of wiggling and the scratch plate's kind of lifting up a little bit oh, as you pull it out. I I hate it when that happens on bases, and so I'm constantly having to tighten up the input. So that is a sign of a bit of cheaper quality, I think. I assume Red Sub's own pickups that they've got in here. And yeah, let's take a listen to how these sound. Thank you. 
So before we talk about the pickups, I'll say some qualms, some more qualms that I have about this bass. The intonation was pretty sharp. Straightening the neck, setting the intonation, you know, giving it the setup that uh, is comfortable for me and how I like it. This bass plays brilliantly and I really, really enjoy it. But that was yesterday. Today, it's like it's reverted back to normal. Looking down the neck, it is started to bow again. It's in standard tuning. The strings are, they're not tighter than they should be. So it's not pulling the neck any more than it normally would. Um, so yeah, I just think that maybe the truss rod is working. It's working, it turned fine, um, but I just think it's not, maybe it's not that strong or the wood's a bit soft. So a bit disappointing there. If you want something that's low maintenance, maybe this isn't the one for you. So these pickups, they're passable. They got a grade C, the GCSE. The P pickup is considerably better than the bridge pickup, I think. It gives a great slap tone. When you turn the tone off as well, sounds really nice playing finger style. When you're playing with a picked tone all the way up, sounds fine, just sounds a bit dull, a bit boring, not much character in there. Moving on to the bridge pickup, I think it sounds nasty. I do not like the sound of it by itself. It's just a bit thin, a bit weak sounding. It takes out some of the girth. Yeah, it wasn't really doing it for me. The pots, you can tell, aren't that high quality because when you've got your tone and you're at 50%, there's not much difference compared to full. And then when you turn it all the way off, there's loads of difference. So there's, you know, I knew that going in that they weren't going to be, but that just confirms that, yeah, if you want to upgrade something, I would say the pickups and the electronics would be something that would be worth looking into. Having said all of that, I am getting distracted playing this bass. It is super fun to play. Despite all its issues, it feels really nice to play. Just walk around the house playing it. It's been a fun time and I've enjoyed having it around, but would I recommend it? If you're looking for a first bass or something just to play on at home, not worry too much about the sound or the upkeep of it, something to throw around, yeah, this might be a fun purchase. Certainly not something I'd recommend for lots of gigging, lots of studio work. I just don't think it's cut out to be that reliable workhorse. I think is quite important when you're looking for a bass that's gonna last and a bass that, you know, is gonna serve you well. Let me know what you think about this bass in the comments section down below. Whether you liked it or not, hit like on the video, subscribe, and go and follow me on Instagram. I'm sharing daily content on there, mostly bass related, or rabbits, or cats, or my face. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.